Well, for us, when we describe a conservation system, we're actually talking about two different components that make up the system. One is a tillage component, and one is a cover crop component. And with the tillage component specifically, we're talking about conservation tillage. When we refer to conservation tillage, we refer to a tillage operation or planting operation that leaves at least 30% of residue on the soil surface. That's the minimum amount that's required, although we would like to see more than that. So examples of conservation tillage may be something like strip tillage. That's a, an operation where we have a subsoil or shank that runs underneath the row and it disrupts the soil profile, eliminates any compacted zones that may be present to enhance root growth so we have better nutrient and water uptake, but it still minimizes the surface soil disruption so we maintain all the residue on the soil surface. Another example would be something like no tillage. We don't do any kind of tillage, we just plant directly into the residue. And then for the cover crop component, we're, we're talking about something like uh, either rye, some kind of cereal, or a legume like crimson clover. And in some cases, uh, there's interest in actually mixing these species together. But the cover crop is a crop that is planted to benefit the soil and our subsequent crop in one or more ways, but it's not harvested for feed or sale. Our soils in, in this region are characterized as ultisols, and ultisols are generally uh, poorly structured soils with low organic matter contents, and they're not naturally fertile soils. Using the conservation system with the, with the tillage and cover crops to add residue back to the system and hopefully improve that soil structure because we're not doing so much disruptive tillage and then as a result we're going to increase organic matter subsequently soil carbon which has a positive effect on many of the soil physical and chemical properties that will ultimately increase productivity for our soils in the region. And that's where the economic benefits come in. And so a lot of the agronomic benefits are also economic benefits. Increasing the yield potential, especially in cotton, we see um, yields are higher after a cover crop than they are um, with fallow systems. There's also a reduction in yield variability. So if you're a producer and you have a field and you can make your yield more consistent across your field, that's going to increase your revenue in the long run. Um, and that, that the benefits to conservation systems really accrue over time. There's fertilizer cost savings. So if you're using a legume, you may be able to offset some of your commercial fertilizer. So that would lower your production cost. Um, weed suppression, less herbicide use, less time in the field going over it with a sprayer, which is great for a producer for their bottom line because margins are tight. Um, there's also future productivity, so if you reduce your soil erosion um, through use of a cover crop, then you can increase your future productivity or minimize the degradation of that productivity, um, and that by reducing your soil erosion. There's also an offsite benefit that goes along with that. Um, Counties, municipalities have to deal with soil erosion through cleaning out ditches, also siltation in uh, reservoirs or any of your water bodies. Those are benefits that accrue offsite to society as a whole. We've actually put together a fact sheet that uh, is available on our website where we've talked about a lot of the characteristics or considerations that a grower needs to consider and then that, that can help them make a decision uh, when they get ready to terminate their cover crops.